Welcome to Pro Tips. Hi, I'm Dean Wedekind with MaxiLift and another in our series of bucket elevator inspections. Now, of course, in this series, we've talked a lot about uh, inspecting the buckets, inspecting the belting, the important parts of that. The backside of the belting is extremely important because it's what carries the static conductivity. But also, we need to check out that head pulley lagging. Now, generally what you're going to find in most bucket elevators is a slide style lagging like this, in which you've got the pads can be moved in and out, retainers stay in place on the pulley. What you want is a lagging that's static conductive, oil resistant, and flame retardant that also provides a lot of traction. And that's what you're going to get with a slide style lagging. This one here happens to be one that's preformed to the diameter of the pulley, but we also have slide style lagging that comes that can be scored in the back so that it can be formed to whatever the diameter of the pulley is. And of course, it's going to slide in and out just the same as the other one. The nice thing about that is as the lagging wears through the years, you can wear down the very middle of the lagging and lose the crown. You can replace that lagging then without having to replace the head pulley. Like I said, most of the time, new pulleys come with lagging installed on them, but what if you have a pulley that doesn't have lagging on it or has the wrong kind of lagging in your facility? Let's look back at a photo that I showed in an earlier Pro Tips and what can be done to remedy that situation. In this photo, if you happen to see this earlier in the other Pro Tip, you'll notice it's a cast iron pulley with a layer of belt lagging and then a belt that the buckets are attached to. This isn't a good situation. If you remember also, that pulley was very close to the sides of the trunking. So it'd be good to replace out that lagging and that pulley completely. But if you had a different situation where you have a cast iron pulley, like I'm showing here in these next photos, you might not be able to or need to replace the pulley. In this case, you can use bolts to bolt on the retainers. And of course you would have to with a cast iron pulley because you can't weld steel retainers to a cast iron pulley. But regardless, even if it was a steel pulley, you can see a little bit closer up in there, you can see the bolts holding the retainers in. But even if it was a steel pulley, you can't weld in most bucket elevators, so you would have to bolt it in. Now, the last photo there shows how the top of the bolts is holding the retainers into place, holds the pads in place, and you can see that this lagging does have some buildup of material in there, but it's still working pretty good. Now, the important part of this is the inspection part. If you're not inspecting the bucket elevator from an area where you can see that lagging from up underneath, you're never going to know the true condition. You're just going to know the outside edges. I hope that you'll check out all of our Pro Tips videos on bucket elevator inspections. You can go to MaxiLift.com or you can see these on YouTube. Just search MaxiLift INC. I'm Dean Wedekin for MaxiLift and Pro Tips.